You know, we were the favorites, and we made our way. They won the East, we won the West. So it's like, uh, everybody just get ready, sit back, and uh, let's enjoy it. <laughs> Cheesy. Cheesy, that's what we called it. Cheesy Johnson, because we hated his smile. That magic smile was really the poster that we could put on the wall and we could start throwing darts at because we hated it that much. So at least we got the game in our court and uh, our fans will be hyped up and it'll be fun. I used to ask him, so what do you do during the day? Well, get up about 10 o'clock, practice at 11. I get over there maybe an hour before practice, I shoot. And then after practice, I shoot for two more hours. Then I go home, watch TV for two hours sleep from 10 to 10. I'm like, hell, do you have a social life? <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> Look out, Burns in the crowd, trying to get a loose ball back, and by golly, he does it. I hated him. I hated Larry. He just went like that. There's no other word to really use. Had to get straight down the middle. Still going, still going. Oh! High line We were La La Land. <laughs> we were Hollywood. We were Magic Johnson in The Smile in Showtime. Why well, I talked about his hair. <laughs> I think he told the media that I was insignificant or something like that. <laughs> I'm not going to worry about him all car or something like that. You know, he just would, would incite, and he always had the quote of all quotes, even though he did nothing in games. <laughs> you know, except swing a tower. You went into an arena there where those fans, they wanted more than just a win. It would be packed, and it would be noisy, and it'd be ugly. Magic! Larry's gonna kill you! There's no magic in here! I wasn't gonna give them their tradition and talk about how great it was to play in Boston Garden and that the ghosts of the garden were hanging up in the rafters and there was a leprechaun on the rim. It was all BS to me. I was always working the other side of the coin about you know what the Celtics were all about, which were hidden places. You know, cameras, you know, spying. Uh, he was paranoid, that's all. And Pat was paranoid or just trying to make it out to be something that wasn't there. I mean, stay tough. Stay tough. That's what it's about. We knew we were the better team. We just had to prove it on the court. So we went out there and we were just two steps quicker than they were. Missing, rebounding is Magic Cooper and the fast break on the town. The Los Angeles Lakers have won in Boston. They really couldn't catch up with us that first game, and I think that kind of shocked them. The second game was the same way. We had them. The Lakers have the lead by two points. So now, what are the Celtics, what can they do with the Lakers having the ball with 20 seconds to play? Well, we believe in the left cut. We, we need luck. We need something on our side to make this happen. So we were sitting there saying, you know, we got we to gotta find a way. We got to find a way. All we got to do is get the ball across the timeline and the game is over. And so I throw it to James Worthy. You know, I remember standing on the sidelines at the time and seeing what Worthy was about ready to do and see the Boston defender anticipating that, thinking, no, please don't throw that pass. And now to Magic, back over to Worthy and it's picked off. Goes to Hammond and he lays it off and in. Worthy was scared. He was, he was scared. He didn't want to shoot that ball at that time. He, he wasn't a good free throw shooter. He was trying to get that ball out of his hands. And he wasn't big game James then. He was more small game James. We just went into shock. I, we were in disbelief. And we played like that afterwards. Magic has still got it down to two seconds. One second. He's going to have to shoot it. We never really recovered from that, and they end up winning that game. And we're going to go to Los Angeles, all even at one game apiece. For a minute there, I could hear Johnny Moose going, "Innocent steal the ball." <laughs> I look back on my career. There are a, a number of moments that just are right there. That being probably one of the number one <laughs> for me, and and that changed the whole dynamic of the series. I just think our guys were angry. There was some ridicule uh, about the loss and how we you know, gave them that ball game that we wanted to come out and, and play in front of our home crowd and make sure that 
you know, we weren't going to lose that home court advantage. And here's the L.A. break. Cooper and Magic Johnson. The Los Angeles Lakers looked like nothing could stop them. Waves. It was waves of fast break. It was, it was, a, it was a track meet. The Celtics cannot handle the speed of the Lakers. We were taking hooks, body shots. We, we were just, we were in the clinch. We just, that's all we could do was stand against the ropes and just take it. This has to be one of the most decisive routes in championship game history. We went in the locker room and Larry made the famous statement that we play like sissies. We got some great players on this team, but we don't have the players with uh, the heart sometimes that we need. I was sitting right next to him. <laughs> and he said in his, his mad, angry uh, Indiana accent. Uh, today, when um, you see Magic slapping high fives and uh, guys going behind her back and shooting layups on us all day long, it seems that somebody would try to put a stop to it. But until we get our hearts uh, where they belong, we're in trouble. I was up in my office at the forum and they came back late in the afternoon, had a practice, and I could hear them yelling and screaming and cussing down there on the court, even though I wasn't spying on them. You could just hear them from where my offices were. We were stretching and getting, getting ready for the game, and um, the comment was, you know, this dunk fest is embarrassing. You know, we got to take somebody out. This is not the march of down, boys. This is marching on to victory. That's what it is. ML was working on Kevin and the whole time and saying, boy, if I was in that game, I'd go in and I'd just do something to something. Kevin's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like one of those, like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll do it, I'll do it. Cooper to Kareem, to Worthy, to Ramble. He should go the distance. Oh, look out. And both benches have empty. And you knew this was going to happen. You could see it coming. First thought that went through my head was like, hey, I'm okay. Now you got to get up and do something about this, Kurt. And then I, I was going after Kevin McHale to do whatever was going to come into my mind at that time. Kevin was so nervous. He was shaking. It was like unbelievable. We told him you did what you had to do. When you can't catch something, you, you got to knock it down to slow it down. And that's what they did. And um, just all hell broke loose. Kareem swings the elbow. Larry and, and Kareem got into it, and then Larry was taking the ball out of bounds. Michael Cooper was trying to guard him. Larry kicked it back and kicked him into the stairs. It was, it was awesome. I got into a verbal thing with Magic, and I said to him, step across this line. Uh, if I come on the floor, I'm in trouble. But you come across this, you come across here, I'm going to flatten you in the floor. ML didn't want to fight me. Remember that. You write that down. Our reaction was too personal. We should have reacted as a team on the court. We tried to deal with it personally and individually, and uh, that, uh, that didn't work for us. Magic with seven, with six. Magic takes the ball, and they throw it. Magic throws it away. Three seconds, intercepted by Parrish. Magic threw it right to Parrish. Tragic. Tragic Johnson is what, this is what we called him then, because he made a couple of bad plays. They're in overtime, tied at 123. Casey drawn up the play for coming out of the huddle, and Larry turned and said, uh, you guys want to win the game? Just give me the ball to get out of the way. <laughs> Gets it over to DJ. Bird goes right into the pivot. Now DJ holds the ball. Back in the birds. The ball away is gone. Boston leads 125 to 123, and the Lakers call timeout. Some guy came off the bench, made a steal, went down and dunked the ball, sealed the victory. I'm not going to tell you who it was. The Boston Celtics have even this NBA World Championship Series. We're coming back. That's right. We're coming back. We'll be back. The next day, Friday, June 4th, 1984, and the temperature at game time inside the garden is 97 degrees Fahrenheit, and there was no air conditioning. Ordered a couple of air conditioning things to, uh, to try to cool off the locker room, portable ones, plugged them in, blew the circuits in Boston Garden. So now it's already 100 degrees. They got the heat turned up. Ooh, you thought you was in this, you know, a sauna. And with Kareem taking that oxygen, and just like, okay, we got them now. You didn't feel like you were breathing air. It was like you were breathing something, but it, it wasn't having any, any effect in your lungs. Here's Magic, off the mark. Lakers had several chances, and here's Larry Bird, chucking down the cross. Shoot it! Shoot it! Yeah! 
Afterward, they, you know, we asked Larry about it, and he said, oh, hell, it's hotter back home playing at French Lick. And the Boston Celtics have trounced the Los Angeles Lakers 121. We had given away a couple of games. We had missed free throws. Uh, the choke label started to come out. I think they were in our heads at that time, and, and they sort of had our number. As we really got into a retaliatory type of mentality. Even though we got game six, I didn't feel good about where we were. You know, as a coach, even though you're going into game seven with great players, you just didn't have that kind of feeling. Well, I thought we'd sweep them in four, but uh, it's went a little bit longer. Now we just have to do it in seven. To come back to Boston uh, for the seventh game, all the marbles. We go in the locker room, everybody's a little tense, and uh, Danny Ainge goes out and gets a heart monitor. It felt like Kevin's chest and there was no heartbeat. So, damn, you're dead, man. You know, you're gonna play. So he comes up to me and says, you know, puts it on my chest. He said, boy, your heart's beating pretty strong. I said, you know what? You guys just climb on my back. You get on my back. I'll take you through this championship. And people forgot one thing, that in 1981, uh, during Larry Bird's first championship, you know, I was the MVP during that series. I was a player of note. Maxwell. Maxwell had to perform. He just put on a show. It was incredible the level he went to. He was just relentless. Maxwell against Magic Johnson. Moving inside. The basket is good and a foul. Somehow he always goes unnoticed, but in the big games he is very much there. We knew we were getting beat, and with about four or five minutes to go, we weren't going to come back, and the celebration started, and and that's not a very good place to be when you're getting beat you know, by the Celtics in the seventh game. You get frustrated when you know that you're a better team, now, especially with Larry beating me. That stuck with me for a long time. The Boston Celtics are the NBA world champions in a grueling seven-game series with the Los Angeles Lakers. I hope they spend the rest of their life thinking that they should have beaten us. <laughs> I hope it's aggravating Kareem and Magic right now. Now we're like old soldiers. Old soldiers never die, they just kind of fade away. Well, that's what happens with us. We're just kind of fading away, but those memories have still lasted for the longest time.